IBM's chairman and CEO, Ginny Romeri, has called the coming times a new era in computing, a new era in cognitive computing, a new era in cognitive systems. The phrase new era signifies not an incremental or a, a tactical shift. It signifies a fundamental strategic and technological shift in terms of the technology and what we do with it. If one of the ideas is to get computers to interact with us the way we want to interact with one another, instead of us sitting down and programming a computer someplace, then this notion of computers that deal with images the way we do, or being able to visualize what we do in a way that isn't a spreadsheet, it isn't a bar chart, it's really visual, it's really the way humans interact with the world, I think that will transform how we do a lot of what we do in the business world as well as in our private lives. I mean, the computers we've been using for the past 60 years have been amazing machines, but they've all been slaves to what's called the von Neumann architecture, a certain way of constructing a computer that uh, involves separating memory and processing, um, doing things in a sequential step-by-step -step fashion, and doing those things according to a program that's been pre-written. So our brains don't work that way at all. They do things in parallel, uh, memory and processing are very intimately intertwined and there's no program. We do the things we do because of the way our brains are configured. So it's been very difficult for computer scientists to try to simulate the brain using traditional computers and that's why we're working on this project where we're trying to invent an entirely new computer architecture that works more like the way our brains do and hopefully we'll be good at the same kinds of tasks that our, our brains are good at. The essence of cognitive computing to me is to think about the difference between the way that most computers work now and the way that the most sophisticated computers on the planet work and those computers are the things that we all carry around in our heads along with you know mammals and all the other little animals that run around and do these amazing feats in real time taking in their environment understanding making decisions very fluidly you know, and responding, and, and uh, how often have you looked at a computer while it's a little hourglass is spinning, and then it does the wrong thing, right? So the ability to bring a level of fluidity and appropriateness to the way that we interact with computing, uh, making computers actually more like biological systems, whether or not they're brains, but having that kind of fluidity where they, they respond and, and react appropriately. So you feel like you're dealing with another living thing, not not a machine. When you look at what the human brain can do, it's really amazing the way we can reason about things and think very deeply about things. But where we start to run into a wall is when we're faced with leveraging huge volumes of data. So looking through tons of documents, millions of books, for instance, uh, is almost impossible for the human brain. But in order to push the boundaries of human cognition, we want to provide access to all of that data. So I think one of the first challenges or tasks of these cognitive computing systems is to facilitate or enable human cognition beyond these barriers. And that's exactly what Watson is all about, in fact. It's about uh, providing access to huge volumes of literature, unstructured information, text, digesting it, evaluating it, and providing efficient access for humans to that information to help that human cognitive process. Cognitive computing is about drawing inspiration from the brain and yet respecting the technological and engineering constraints of the society to create a new generation of computers and a new generation of services and solutions to make the world better.